you for speaking with us. That panel was great. <gasps> Thanks. Wasn't that fun? We're yeah, doing this cool. Buffy verse panel for the Buffy comics, and Nikki Brandon walks in. Totally, and he's such a riot. <laughs> oh my god, it was so funny. And I, they said to me about a secret special guest, and I didn't. I didn't even know if they were serious. <laughs> and then like, Nikki, well, sometimes it falls through. <laughs> oh, I've de- I've been on panels where it's, where several of them fell through, and it ended up just being me on the panel. <laughs> oh, jeez. And I thought maybe Nicholas Brendan, but he has like all day signings every day, so I was like, no. That's yeah, how is he gonna have time? But it was good because it was like half of current comic verse and half TV. Yeah. People. And a lot of speedo jokes. And a lot of speedo yeah. Jokes. Nothing wrong with that. In the panel, you spoke about the Billy-shaped hole in the Buffyverse right. in terms of the di- diversity. Right. Um, after Billy's arc is done, are there more plans for Billy or someone like him in the future? Uh, I don't know specifically, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there if if Billy stuck around. I, I would I would lo- let's say it this way: I would like to see Billy stick around. So would we. Um, cute Devin. Yeah. Is he obsessed with Slayers, interested in Billy, or something in between? I think Cute Devin is is both of those things. I think he is a scholar of the Slayer scene, um, but I also think he likes Billy, because who wouldn't? <laughs> he, Billy is cute and adorable and brave, and and I like that the two of them know that like if they combine their strength and sort of be a, a pseudo slayer and a pseudo watcher that they can accomplish something good for the world. Yeah, I think I think Devin is a good guy. He's not obsessed with either of them in a bad way, but in a good way. You mentioned in the panel that moving from Ellen to Buffy was why you sort of moved from comedy to drama. Right. How does it feel to be back to comedy with husbands after tackling pretty much every sci-fi franchise that exists? I love comedy and I love drama, and I've always tried to bring comedy to the dramas that I've written, even Battlestar, which a lot of people think of as humorless. It's so not. Baltar is funny. I wrote, I tried to write funny scenes with dark humor and, you know, and it sort of exploit the stuff that Baltar does so well. So, uh, so I've brought comedy to drama. I've also continued to go back periodically to comedy. So I wrote on a show called Jake in Progress. I wrote for a show called Andy Barker P.I. So every now and then I've gone back to the world of comedy. I wrote for Star Wars Detours that's going to be coming out. That's the um, animated comedy Star Wars project with the guys from uh, Robot Chicken, uh, including Seth Green, who comes from the Buffy world. So I've always kept doing, kept alive in comedy. Husbands is my first time in a very long time going back to a tr- very traditional sitcom, and I love it. And it was wonderful to go back to writing what we call hard jokes, where you you sort of set up punch. It's a very traditional joke structure that, if done perfectly, is sort of the backbone of today's television. It's where TV started, and I feel we're doing it in a young, refreshing, positive way. Um, love love writing comedy, and Brad Bell, who co-wrote and stars in Husbands, um, he and I have very similar joke writing sensibilities, so the two of us love to get in there and, and sort of craft these punchlines. And similarly, on, on Buffy, you, bro- you wrote both serious and silly episodes. Mm-hmm. Did you feel more comfortable back then with, in Buffy with either one? It took me a while at Buffy to get over having just come out of sitcoms that I felt everything had to be funny. I used to think there was only one way to be entertaining. If people weren't laughing, they weren't entertained. So I actually got in, had to learn that lesson uh, and I wrote the episode called Gingerbread because my first draft of it, I was trying to make everything funny. And there were like dead kids in that episode and Joss <laughs> had to actually say like, eh. This can be entertaining without having to be a joke, because the joke is making it look like we don't care about the dead kids. Right. So that was where I really learned that lesson. Um, what's weirder, writing for a Joss Whedon series 15 years after its inception, or mm-hmm. writing dialogue for your own show for Joss Whedon to act? It was, oh my God, it's, it's wonderful that Buffy has continued and I still get to write those lines. But in terms of weirdness, Definitely writing lines for Joss to act because Joss, as you know, is an actor in Husbands, which people can watch at lovehusbands.com. They go there and they watch any of the episodes of season two and they're going to see Joss Whedon. He's in all the episodes and he's brilliant. I'd seen him act before because he does Shakespeare readings at his house where he pr- plays roles and, and just knowing him, I just knew he could do it. And uh, Brad and I together wrote those lines and then like rewrote them to like 
super fine-tuned them for Joss, and then Joss had his own ideas about how to deliver them, and he even he moved a few words around and, <laughs> and just made it made it all the better. Great. Um, once upon a time. Yeah. It's, sub it's subverting a lot of the fairy tale female stereotypes, much like Buffy did with the girls in horror movies. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is the Buffy of that show? The Buffy of Once Upon a Time is Emma. Emma is the savior. She's the central figure who is um, sort of in every generation. Like uh, uh, Emma has to save fairy tale land from this curse that the evil queen put on it. She's very much our Buffy. Um, so you're so busy right now. Do you yeah. know what's next? Yes, right now I'm very busy doing Once Upon a Time and Husbands. We're also doing Husbands comic books starting October 24. There are digital Husband comics that will be collected next year in a volume. Yeah. Um, that Dark you can, Horse. Through Dark Horse, absolutely. So people should be aware of that. Buffy Season 9 comics continues. Um, but, but other than that, Once Upon a Time is my main focus. That's where I get up every morning and go. Uh, if something else comes along, some other TV thing, I will let you guys know. Thank you so much. Thank you.